Hi guys this is an AI and now on with the story chapter 41 Naruto's Pav. I find myself pinned to a tree looking around unsure where I am and where anybody is I looked around to see nobody around. That is until I heard someone behind me groan turning as much as I could I saw blonde hair as well. As a pool of blood blow us, hey. I said barely louder than a whisper I didn't get a response from. The person I tried to nudge them to get their attention but my efforts were futile as I could not reach them I decided to take in my surroundings I see that we are still in a forest as the day was. Turning to dusk there was a fire going on about 40 feet to my left with two figures sitting around it, did we really lose? I thought as I saw the black cloak with red clouds, there were 16 of us. How did we lose and three jinchuriki at that? I kept looking around and I saw Karabi tied to his own tree. It is at that moment that I figured out that the three of us were tied to trees and I was clearly the only one awake. I continued my wandering gaze when I spotted a pile I didn't know what to make of it and was prepared to move on when I saw something glowing red. My eyes watch on as. The light gets brighter only to reveal the bloody and battered corpses of what was my friends and family my breathing hitched I began to hyperventilate as I tried to get my tenant's attention. Karama, only to receive nothing in return, Karama. I yelled louder and once again silence my breathing slowed as my world went dark as I thought of one thing before slipping into a deep slumber. As tears rolled down my face. H. Hanada. Karama's Pav. I'm sorry Kit but I needed to do this. I thought as I looked down at my partner I looked around as my chakra engulfed his body as I forced what I could through this cursed seal I watched as most of Naruto's comrades looked on in shock as I halted a few tendrils by sheer power. A few strands of cloth will never be able to stop me, I said. Looking at the freak with a mask. Naruto-kun. I turned to see the kit's mate looking at me concerned. Sorry he is asleep at the moment may I take a message? I said causing most of his friends to fall. Flat on their faces. Looks like Da Whittle Fox wants to play. Said the man with slicked back hair. Listen here you may feel as if you can mock me but I am familiar with both of your jutsu, I said. Hoping I can bluff my way through the one with a scythe. Oh please tell us what you know it may help with your battle against us, he replied, your partner the freak in the mask I recognize from the stories I heard while sealed into the wife of Hashirama Senju he uses a kinjutsu known as the Jongu Earth Grudge Fear which allows him to steal the hearts of his foes gaining their abilities. I said before trying to think of something for the other freak, you use your opponent's blood. Against them if you are able to ingest even a single drop you perform a jujutsu with the help of a seal you place on the ground with your own blood in doing so any damage you do to yourself is also done to your foe you also are given immortality for some unknown reason minus malnutrition as dismemberment does not affect you in any way. I hope that I hit the nail on the coffin with some of the information I have gathered through the years inside the other two Jinchuriki, damn that was actually quite a good description but that doesn't matter as there isn't anything you can do to kill us, the annoying one yelled, I know what I need to do in order to win this battle but I feel that nothing that I do will be in our favor most of my powerful attacks are mainly widespread rather than narrow attacks. Thinking of a plan I watch as the team of the Hokage's son and the three clan heads. Take on the freak in the mask with the Mokaton user's team as support. Meanwhile I am stuck with the Kit's adoptive father mate pale boy and the foreign nin, Matabi Gyuki can you hear me? I ask with our now connected mental link. Hi Karama ni my have you grown over the years? Matabi said with a seductive tone. Oh stop you horny cat just focus on the fight at hand. I said, I agree with. Karama Matabi we must focus this foe could incapacitate each of our jinchuriki fairly easily. 
Gyuki said as I watched his jinchuriki nod in agreeance. What are you all waiting for I can take? You all on, said the man charging in as the kit's mate gave a strike to the man's abdomen launching him backward. Hey you bitch that hurt. He yelled I don't know what it was but I guess my animal. Instincts emerged as I growled at the man. Oh are you protective of someone Kayubi? The man asked. As I knew he picked her as his target. Well that's a shame for you as I love taking out my targets. Loved ones before their very eyes. He yelled charging again this time he was stopped by a blue flaming tail I watch as Matabi's Jinchuriki enters her tailed beast state attacking her foe with extreme ferocity. This is for trying to separate me from my kitten, she yelled through her mental link as her massive paw crashed down on the man suddenly the Jinchuriki of Gyuki started his abysmal rapping and I tuned him out instantly. Gyuki I have to ask how are you able to maintain a sane state when you are stuck inside that, I said referring to his Jinchuriki, believe me I have no clue myself, a rather depressed Gyuki stated I watched on as the kit's team attacked the man. With multiple long distance attacks nothing was affecting him though the thing that piqued my curiosity is why was he still attempting to dodge the attacks if he was immortal then it hit me this man isn't actually immortal he can die by malnutrition so that means he is probably using a jutsu to help heal himself from any wound as well as function without oxygen from his lungs i have an idea i said as my brother and sister just waited for my plan i think that him being immortal may just be a bluff otherwise why would he still attempt to dodge these humans jutsu? I continued. I see so. You think he is using some kinjutsu to keep him alive from dismemberment and mutilation so you think. There is a way to counteract this, Gyuki asked. I do what if besides mutilation he is also susceptible to poisons. I get what you are saying Kurama but I believe that he may have built up. An immunity against most poisons especially after the reports of the poison Sasori of the sand used. Said Matabi, however they have had no access to our chakra while these two were around, I said. I see where you are going with this, Matabi said, my chakra is the most potent let me handle the poisoning you will need to distract him. I said as I agreed to the plan I watch on as a tentacle. Shoots out the back of Gyuki's Jinchuriki and wraps around the man's waist before throwing him. Towards Matabi who is able to smack him right towards me as I have him pinned to the ground I. Begin to pump my chakra into his system forcefully he begins to yell in pain like never before as. His flesh begins to melt off of him the onlookers began to look queasy as the flesh of the once. Thought immortal Hedan melted right off his muscles killing him I stood back up in time to see the trio from Kumogakure throwing up as everyone else looked indifferent or held their mouths and stomachs this all stopped as a gut-wrenching scream was heard off towards the other battle sprinting. At high speeds towards the other fight we watch as the still beating heart of Zabuza Momochi lay in. The hands of Kakazu right above the lifeless corpse of the now heartless man, Tou San, Chapter 42. Kurama's Pav. I watch on as the Hyaten user screams in anguish at the loss of his father figure. Everyone watched on in complete and utter shock as from what I could tell this boy was always well. Reserved I suddenly notice that the temperature is dropping extremely fast faster than anything I have ever seen in all my years as the temperature dropped I noticed that small icicles were forming out of the ground, shit he is gonna use that, I thought, everyone back, I yelled as everyone jumped away except for the masked enemy suddenly the small icicles sprouting from the ground shot out of the ground as the massive spikes of ice followed impaling all the masked thread-like beings I Watch as the Hyaten user continues his onslaught as the actual man was able to escape the jutsu the battle ended quickly as he was able to kill the man shortly after as a group everyone walks over to 
The young man who was now cradling the lifeless corpse of the man named Zabuza no one said anything. As we watched the scene before us that is until the kit's new father walked up to him laying his hand on the young man's shoulder he began to speak, I know how it feels Haku I too watched as my father died after the village shunned him for prioritizing his team over the mission I thought that everything he did was wrong after he committed suicide this line of thinking is what got my best friend Obito Uchiha killed as well as my other close friend Rin Nohara, I watched as the man looked down at his own hand as a tear subtly rolled down his cheek. Then there was my sensei who became my new father figure after mine passed away he raised me for a while before he was also killed during the Kyubi attack no offense, he said as he looked at me, what, I said causing most to fall on their face. Look my point is that we need to take their bodies back to Konoha for inspection so we can learn what we can about their organization and we can't wait here forever, he said and was about to continue when I spoke up. Actually I am about to lose control of this state and the kit will be unconscious for a while still oh and he may or may not think that you are all dead goodbye. And with that Naruto's body fell to the ground unconscious. Time skip plus Naruto's paw, where am I? I said opening my eyes but I remembered what happened before I passed out, Hanada, I yelled I sat up and looked around before my eyes laid on the surprised face of my girlfriend, N, Naruto-kun, she said in her startled state before anything else happened I launched myself at her tackling her too. The ground, I love you Hanada. I yelled causing her face to become bright red, Naruto I don't think. This is the time. I heard from behind me and I turned to see two San with a saddened look on his face and I looked around to see everyone was fine but had a somber look on them especially Haku then. I realized that Zabuza was nowhere to be found I was about to ask when I saw two San shaking his head while Anko San walked up to him giving him a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Now we have to get back to Konoha before we run into any more complications, Anko said. All right everyone we will be moving out now. I also noticed that Haku was fairly close to Yugito if this were under normal circumstances I would have joked around with him but he had just lost the one man he thought of as family, Hanada. I said grabbing her hand. What happened? I asked she then described the events. That transpired as well as how Karama took over and literally melted Hidan and then how they all ran. Towards the other battlefield to find Zabaza's heart ripped out I was stunned that something like. That happened. I should have been there. I said looking at the ground. You wouldn't have been able. To do anything we were trying to deal with Hidan while the others dealt with Kakazu and this is just how the battle ended people die and nothing will ever change that she said before placing her free hand on my cheek while rubbing her thumb on my whisker marks. We just have to cherish the moments we have with those we love right Naruto-kun. I looked into the lavender eyes of the woman that I love and leaned in slowly as she followed causing our lips to meet for a soft tender kiss, you should talk to him, she said after breaking the kiss, you have a gift for talking to people Naruto-kun. She said I walked over towards Haku and noticed a person covered by a blanket while hearing Haku sniffling and Yugito holding him in her arms, Haku, I said as the boy whipped his eyes and looked up at me, I'm sorry I promised to help protect my precious people and I failed you, I said bowing. To him, Naruto please, there is no need to bow to me, he said in a voice full of pain and sorrow, I failed myself today, Haku said as I raised my head, if I had not frozen at the sight of the tendrils rushing me then Zabuza-sama wouldn't be dead, Haku said, Haku you understand that is not Something you can blame yourself for Zabuza-san chose your life over his own I believe he did this. To atone for his sins that he believed he committed by saving you, 
I said as Haku gave a subtle nod. If you need anything Haku you know you can talk to me or to San anytime, I said, thank you. Naruto you've always been kind to me, he said with a small smile I pat him on the shoulder gently. And walked back over to Hanada. You know I think that he will be alright we just need to give him a little time. I said watching him and Yugito interact Hanada was about to reply but Tusan spoke up. All right we will be moving out tomorrow make sure you have everything you need by then, he then went on to describe each watch shift for the night I laid down next to Hanada as we embraced each other on the cool night that was to come, Hanada, I asked after about a half hour of laying there. Unable to sleep, yes Naruto-kun. She said as the moonlight glistened off her eyes, you are the most caring and loving woman I have ever met. I said pulling her closer, and, Naruto-kun, she said. Blushing, I love you so much, I said, what's bringing this up all of a sudden, she said blushing. Wildly, just before I passed out I saw all your corpses in a pile only a few feet away from me and on top was you and your eyes that are full of warmth and a caring gaze were cold and lifeless it. Made me truly realize that I could lose anyone I love in a moment if I am not careful, I said. Naruto-kun, she said again taking her hand and placing it on my cheek before giving me a short kiss and backing away, that was always a given considering our job I know what you mean though we can die any day and it would just devastate me if anything were to happen to you, she then nuzzled her head into the crook of my neck I planted a kiss on the top of her head before falling into a deep sleep the next day we were able to say goodbye to the Kumo Nin much to Haku's dismay that he had to be separated from Yugito, oh I will really be messing with him about that once he gets better, I thought looking at him we really didn't do anything else until we reached the village. When we got there we had arrangements for Zabuza San's funeral after about a week the funeral itself was held and everyone that was on the mission including a few of those who were able to get close. With the pair over the years this entire time I have been training myself to the bone in order to become stronger in order to protect those I care about and prevent anything like Zabuza from happening again I was at training ground 7 practicing using multiple elements at once to a larger scale than before, cage bunshin no jutsu, I yelled as a few bunshin materialized into existence. All right you already know what to do, I said as each went off to combine different elements to create new jutsu that only I could perform in order to fight better against those with similar abilities to the Sharingan's copying I watched as my Bunshin attempted to make new attacks. And some were successful while others failed miserably I personally began working on upgrading my Rasengan into a better form by adding elements to it I was having little success with it when Hanada arrived at the training grounds, hey, I said as she walked over with two bentos and gave her a quick kiss, what did you bring today, I asked as she said I couldn't eat ramen as much since I needed to eat better foods, well today we got fresh tishoku with a side of rice and shiro a, she said, Ooh that sounds great Heim thanks, I said, I don't have the heart to tell her I absolutely hate tofu, I thought internally crying we casually ate our food as we talked about training and how I was trying to advance my Rasengan, I tried to use wind chakra on the inside while keeping the outer barrier unfused with any element to make the case the same but output maximized, I said as she just laughed and spoke, why don't you just use the elemental chakra on the outer barrier as well? She said as I blinked a few times I stood up and attempted her idea a few steps away and sure. Enough it worked handily, I guess I was overcomplicating things, I said while holding the sweeten. Resengan I then proceeded to test its damage against a tree and instead of it mashing into the tree. Creating a spiral pattern it shot a stream of water that sprung piercing multiple trees, cool, I 
yelled as multiple trees collapsed I then tried to add more elements into the Rasengan I infused Mokaton into the orb and when I crashed it into a rock the wood splintered and impaled the rock obliterating it I proceeded to try this with other elements and got varying results the most interesting was definitely futon as it created a dome of chakra that I don't think I will try again it took the shape of a Fuma shuriken and I decided to name it the rosin shuriken another amazing one was implementing Bakutan it ended up creating an explosion from the palm of my hand cool I yelled Again as Hanada laughed at my childlike antics, Hey Naruto, I heard from behind Hanada I turned around to see Sakura running over, You and Hanada have been requested by Hokage-sama, she said as. The two of us packed our things and made our way to Ba-chan's office, Good you are here, she said. As we entered, all right Kurenai Kakashi I am sending your teams to a lake near Mizu no Kuni as the Sanbi has been spotted in the area. This immediately perked Kurama's interest, you are telling me. That Isobu is free, Kurama half yelled, it's fine we will save your brother sister I don't know. Never met them, I thought, brother, Kurama said before I paid attention back to Ba Chan, your task will be to seal away the Sanbi so the Akatsuki is unable to get their hands on it, Ba Chan. Continued, what, Kurama yelled pissed off that his brother would be sealed away, easy the seal can be released once the Akatsuki are finished deal. I said to him, fine, I sighed when he said that. Hoping that this would be an easy mission, you leave tomorrow morning so prepare in that time and get enough rest, hi, chapter 43 Naruto's Pav, running through the forests of Hai no Kuni. Towards Mizu no Kuni I spent most of my time talking to Kurama about what we should expect from Isobu I was informed that his skin is resistant to almost anything and his only weakness is his eye. We kept running in silence as focus was key in this situation that is till we ran into some unexpected guests a fist came crashing down behind two sand sending him flying off, shit, I mentally yelled three more enemies walked out from behind some trees the first one dark brown hair with black eyes he wore a purple loose fitting vest while his midsection was covered in bandages and tan pants as well as some weird blue poncho like apparel around his neck and black wrist warmers the next one had purple hair and gray eyes they wore a black cloak and undershirt while they had lavender pants Lastly the most distinguishable item they had was a gas mask covering the lower half of their face. The last one, like what the hell is that they wore a blue slime covered bodysuit from head to toe. And all that showed was a wide eyed creepy, yeah quick question for mucus brain before we get started what the hell are you wearing, I asked causing a laugh from the first his partners looked at him judgingly. What no one ever called him that before and it kinda fits, he tried to justify. Hanada check on Kakashi sensei. I whispered while they were distracted, he is alright and handling. His phone now, she replied as we focused back on the enemies at hand. Kagari do it, the one that was. Laughing said as a yellowish smoke rolled into the area I couldn't see or smell anything in this. Stuff I made a few hand signs before I had to dodge an attack from my left. Oh a sensory type. Mucus brains said, that's not all I can do girly. I replied, I am a man. He yelled as his arm. Stretched from his body like an elastic band. Shit. I yelled mentally not prepared for such an attack. I need to get rid of this fog damn it. I thought but I suddenly heard a small clicking. Noise I didn't know what to make of it at the moment when I ran into something or rather someone I turned around with a kanai in hand to see the pink hair of Sakura Haruno. Damn it Naruto don't scare me like that. I was about to say something when I felt mucus brain's presence. Duck. I yelled as I pulled her down and pushed her out of the way and I was finally able to make the hand signs I needed. Futon Daitapa. 
I yelled as the large gust of wind dispersed the smoke around us, and you are a futon user this may be a problem. Mucus Brain said with a rather upsetting glare, where are the others? Sakura asked I did my best to locate other people but I couldn't identify them while in the middle of combat yet dodging multiple strikes from the man. I was able to pinpoint a few people's locations, Sakura. I yelled jumping over a leg sweep only to get punched upside the head, damn it. There are two groups one to the north and one to the east. I said punching the guy back a bit, cage. Bunshin no jutsu. I yelled as a single bunshin manifested as we both went through different hand. Signs, Katen Hosenka no jutsu. I yelled as the fireballs burst from my mouth, Futon Renkuden, my. Bunshin yelled as the mid bullets hit into fireballs, making them larger and faster, Katen as well. The man yelled as he tried his hardest to dodge every last bit of fire, but that was just a distraction for Sakura and the real me to get away. I made my way behind him while leaving another. Bunshin in my place and Sakura went to hopefully regroup with the rest I watched as my Bunshins went on with some useless banter as I waited for the opportune moment to strike as I waited for my moment. A large dome burst from the ground around everyone, is that crystal? I asked mentally and Karama. Confirmed it, well looks like by the end of today I will have a new affinity to my repertoire. I Smirked my smirk dropped as I noticed a rubber man had taken out my bunshin and was chasing Sakura. Shit I got distracted. I thought of chasing down my foe I caught up quickly as I held my hand out. To my side palm facing up. Katen Rasengan. I yelled as the flaming ball of chakra formed in my hand. As I was about to make contact with the rubber man he began screaming in agony and he thought that. The battle was over, just kidding. He said punching me to the side, well that is a shame that this suit also has a water storage system that causes this protective slime around my body. So what you are saying is that you are weak against Raiden. I said, exact, Lee, he started confidently but quickly realized his mistake. Raiden Raiju Suiga, I yelled as a hound of lightning charged mucus brain at the speed of, well, lightning and fried the man into unconsciousness, what was that jutsu? Asked Sakura, oh it is something that Kakashi Sensei taught me at home, I said as she nodded I dug into my pouch as a small plume of smoke emitted from it and I pulled out a stasis scroll I then placed the scroll down and rolled mucus brains onto it sealing him away, come on let's find the others. I said running northward. Time skip. When Sakura and I arrived I saw something that thoroughly pissed me off what I saw was Hanada stuck inside some crystal and next to her was a woman. With a blade of the same substance on her arm. What did you do to Hanada? I said in a low and cold tone anyone could feel the temperature dropping extremely low the moisture in the air began to freeze ever so slightly people's breathing hitched i held out both my hands to make two rasengan when two san stopped me easy naruto you don't want to do anything rash that crystal will kill her if it shatters said two san everything nerve ending in my body was pleading for me to go and save her but two san was right i couldn't act out here i was trying to think of a plan to get her out but Nothing came to mind then it hit me if I am able to understand how the jutsu works then I may be able to copy the keke Jenke and release her myself. How do you even crystallize something? I asked as she dumbly told me how she cools the liquid around a person in order to freeze them. So it is somewhat similar to Hyaten then this should be easy. I smirked. What are you smiling about I? Have your friend held hostage and all you do is smile, she asked, it's nothing really I just realized how I am gonna stop you, I said I didn't move an inch so as to not provoke her to attack. The frozen Hanada instead she formed some hand signs, perfect. I thought as I activated my eyes and 
copied the hand signs I deactivated my eyes as fast as soon as Karama copied the Keke Jenke into my system the woman was confused why I was performing the same hand signs as her as she called out. Her jutsu, shot in Hasha Koryu crystal release burst crystal falling dragon, to her astonishment not. One dragon of crystal formed but two, W. What, she said taking a step back, oh that, I say. Pointing to my own dragon as they clashed, that would be a hint of my own keke jenke, I said for. The first time openly to anyone besides Team 7 Tenzo Ni Anko San Team 8 Gigi Pervy Sage in. Ba Chan I look over at Sai who is watching intently, Sai. I said as he looked at me, if the. Information about my Keke Jenke is ever given to your boss. I turned to him with the most killing. Intent I could muster, I'll kill every last one of you root members. I said as Karama's eyes. Overlapped mine, you, understood, that is the first time I think Sai has ever shown genuine emotion in my life, also meet me after this mission I have something I want to give you, I said turning back. To the fight I noticed the dragons dispel and the woman is still standing there in shock I make a few hand signs and am able to place a hand on the crystal encasing Hanada, Kai, I yelled as the Crystals receded into the ground and Hanada was free. How? The woman yelled again it was getting on. My nerves at this point from these auto nin. I already told you. I said in an angered voice as I. Turned to Hanada. Are you alright? I asked. Hi the shot and just surprised me a bit. Hanada said. Gaining her balance I turned to see that our foe was able to get away and I turned to every single person standing there, really? You just let them go. I said as they looked over and realized that the woman was gone. Let's just go. I said as we got closer and closer to the lake I heard the clicking again. Kiba do you or Akamaru here click? I asked. What is clicking? Kiba said as well as Akamaru barking. He also doesn't hear anything. He said which shocked me as I thought at least. Akamaru would have heard it, Karama who can no one hear it? I asked, well with me boosting your senses your hearing is now at a level along the lines of 20 hertz to 65,000 hertz your friends. Hound may only have a hearing range of 20 hertz to a high of 45,000 hertz to your 65,000 hertz. Karama said, that makes sense, I thought as we got closer to the lake and the smoke rolled in again. As I felt a large amount of chakra in the lake, is that Isobu? No that's something or someone else. Karama said I began performing hand signs as we approached the smoke, Futon Daitapa, I yelled. Blasting the smoke away and continuing to the lake the lake itself was covered in mist I was then. Told to flank around and get to the lake while the rest covered me, all right Karama it's just you and. Me. I thought with a grin knowing I won't have to hold back anymore. Right let's go deal with Isobu. Chapter 44 Naruto's Pav. On the bank of the lake I watched as a child had a beam of light. Shooting from him into the sky. Damn. I thought looking at the kid in awe. Why are you envious you? Have me remember. Karama snarled. R. Right sorry. I replied sheepishly suddenly I feel the need to. Move and jump as crystals shot out of the ground similar to Hayaten Hasatsu Hiyoso, stay away from him, the woman from before yelled. Who is he and what is he doing to the Sanbi, I asked while telling Karama it is dangerous to reveal Isobu's name to the enemy, he is to become the new Jinchuriki of the Sanbi to give Otogakure the power it needs to become a great village, she declared all I could do was laugh. What is so damn funny brat? She snarled. It's the fact that you think I will let that innocent child deal with the mental torture he will receive from your village. I said, how would you know is it because your village has a biju and you resent your jinchuriki? I didn't reply and just looked at the woman to see what her true motives were and the one thing 
That was in her eyes more than anything else was fear. You are scared. I whispered, the hell are you talking about? She said stepping back a bit as a bead of sweat rolled down her forehead I was about to say something when the beam died down and Isobu surfaced from the depths of the lake I watched on as Isonu was charging towards the child on the boat and I moved as fast as I could to save the child I was not the only one though as the woman also ran in with terrified eyes reaching the boat I was able to use my sweeten abilities to move the boat away as Isubu opened his mouth swallowing the two of us whole time skip. I wake up in a daze looking around in an unfamiliar location. I look to my left to see the woman from before on the ground with her side torn up my eyes. Widened as I reached for my bandages and tended to her wounds she was unconscious for a while and I was able to finish with little resistance I was finally able to look at my surroundings and noticed. The strong and spiked intricacies that are Isobu's stomach I decided that this was the time to try and interact with Isobu from the inside I sat down in a meditating position as I placed my fist on the ground and closed my eyes searching I traversed the vastness of my mind to try and connect to the Sanbi and I decided to mutter one word or rather name Isobu with that I felt the motion of what I presumed was Isobu was either swimming or walking on land I then felt the mental presence of the beast within my mind I walked into the sewers which were my mindscape and saw Isobu in all his glory behind me stood Karama as well as we looked at Karama's brother, Karama, Isobu said in surprise, Isobu, Karama replied, why are you here with this human? asked the Sanbi as a tick mark formed on my forehead. I can hear you Datbeo, I yelled realizing I haven't said that in a while. Your point is mortal, Isobu retorted. Look I am here to tell you two things, I said and Isobu looked at Karama who nodded much to the Sanbi's surprise. Fine what are they, Isobu demanded. Firstly you are in danger, I said and Isobu looked at me as if I had two heads I watched him look at Karama with an amused face but turned worried when his brothers looked extremely serious, even. You Karama, Isobu said shakily, extremely, was all Karama said, there is a group out there known. As the Akatsuki they wore black cloaks with red clouds and, suddenly Isobu's eye widened, I know. Of them, Isobu said stunning both myself and Karama. What do you mean? I asked, when I was sealed. Into the Yandaimi Mizukage we encountered two men one was a man named Juzo Biwa and was the wielder of Kabikirabocho and a man named Itachi Uchiha for your village wearing the same thing, Isobu. Stated, we ended up taking care of Juzo but his partner escaped then that man showed up, Isobu said. With pure rage, who, Karama asked as curious as I am, Madara Uchiha, was all Isobu responded, causing Karama's hackles raised as he viciously snarled at the mere mention of that man, what did he look like, I asked as I have never seen him before, same cloak that you had described but he had a mask with a single eyehole in it and a sharingan in a kamui shuriken pattern to it, Isobu said as Karama toned back his rage a bit, that is not Madara Uchiha, Karama said, the chakra signature was familiar to me but I would know if it was Madara he used me to fight Hashirama Senju and he was killed in battle the man you speak of was someone that my last Jinchuriki had interacted with but I can't pinpoint anyone it could be, Karama said and I thought for a moment before it hit me, wait. They were close to Ka San. I asked as my partner nodded, and he has the Sharingan but only one eye. I asked to which Isobu nodded, with a pattern similar to two Sans, I said as Karama's eyes widened, Obito, Karama said with widened eyes, two Sans T, well two Sans student and Kakashi Sensei's teammate, I said in surprise, this will devastate him. I said as an unnerving 
silence hung in the air. Boy you said you had two things to say to me what was it? Isobu said, ah. That. Well you have to be sealed away again. I said hanging my head down. What? Isobu yelled, why? The hell do I need to be sealed into some worthless human or a damn vase? Isobu screamed, it is too. Protect you brother, Kurama said trying to calm Isobu, to hell with that Kurama no one and I mean. No one will be sealing me again, he yelled, I think they may be trying to recreate that tree. Kurama said, you cannot be serious, Isobu said wide-eyed, what tree, I asked as they both looked. Down at me they knowingly sighed as I felt like this was going to be a long story they then told me. The story of the Rakuto Senin and the God Tree or rather the Jubi which they originated from. Kurama then told me how Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha were the reincarnations of the Senins. Sons Ashura and Indra. They had already attempted to capture Shukaku and Matabi Suchi no Kuni. Also as giving son Goku and Kokuo's Jinchuriki to them for free, I said which enraged the Sanbi. Damn them for handing our siblings to those mistaken assholes, Isobu screamed, it's fine we can. Deal with that together I just need to protect you for the time being so the Akatsuki can't win, I said looking at the heavily armored Sanbi, fine I will allow you to seal me but only after we deal. With these heathens, Isobu said talking about the Otto Nin, but I am still in your stomach, I said. Half panicked, wait I have to deal with something, I said leaving my mindscape only to see the woman from before charging me with a kanai before collapsing in pain, well rise and shine to you, I said jokingly, fuck you, she said grabbing her side, well that's no way to treat the guy who saved your life, I said pointing towards the bandages. I don't care you are just a greedy Konoha shinobi. Who wants to have the sanbi for himself, she yelled, who do I need the sanbi, I asked, because that is all you Konoha nin or you are greedy and take what you want, she yelled, that is a lot. Coming from the underlying of Anukanin of Konoha who is the greediest of us all, I said, fuck you. Konoha has the Kayubi under their control why can't we have the Sanbi for our own protection, she yelled, the Kayubi is not under the village's control. I replied, how the hell do you know, she yelled furiously suddenly my rage got the best of me as a golden cloak wrapped around me, because I am the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, Chapter 45 Naruto's Pav. I looked down to see the yellow glow that I have never seen before fluttering all over my body, K. Karama, I thought as I looked at the golden hue and strange black markings along my body, well it looks like you are finally able to control some of my power kit, that single statement astounded me I had never thought that I would be able to reach this level so soon, what the hell, I heard the woman say just below me, what, I asked, what the hell is that, she yelled terrified I deactivate Karama's chakra cloak and look down at the woman, proof, I said turning away from the woman, what's your name, she asked, you know it, is rude to ask one's name without giving your own first, I countered, fine Gurin is my name now, what's yours, she said annoyed, Naruto Naruto Uzumaki, I said as I began to perform a new exercise, I thought of what I did was I attempted to use each element at my fingertips I was able to do this. Once I achieved all five main affinities but now that I have ten different elements I thought I would attempt it again on my left hand thumb would sprout it out of it index finger a ball of water. Middle finger ice ring finger an orb of wind and pinky a rock on my right hand thumb was a flame the index had sparks flaring off it the middle finger was a pink crystal ring finger small bolts of lightning shot out and lastly a swirling ball of sand on top of my pinky gurin looked surprised as I performed the exercise what I said not looking back at her I I have just never seen anyone use 
so many nature transformations before, she said, well that is what's unique about me I have a unique keke jenke that allows me to copy one's elemental affinity when I was younger I was unable to copy anything that changed during my first mission outside the village when I was able to copy the other four basic affinities minus my birth given one which is futon I said as she had an understanding nod you know that I work for Orochimaru yet you tell me this information about yourself she said oh believe me I know what to say and not even if Orochimaru was able to steal my eyes they would be useless to him I replied how do you know she asked really this is me family's keke jenke why wouldn't I know about it I asked back rather annoyedly point taken she replied we sat silently until a bunch of little isobu surrounded us I quickly placed my hand on the ground and tried to make a connection with isobu what is going on isobu why are there like a thousand of you here i asked they are what breaks down my food you should probably run shit i mentally cursed gurin we gotta go i yelled as she tried to stand and grabbed her side in pain i got you i said picking her up before bolting around isobu's gut karama do you have any idea how we can get out of here, I thought. Maybe try to have him throw you up, he suggested and I smirked knowing what to do I set Gurin down once we had a moment. Please excuse me as it may get a little cramped, I said forming a half ram seal. What, she said but it was too late, cage Bunshin. No jutsu, within a second thousands of Bunshin filled Isobu's stomach before he started gagging. Slowly we felt some strange liquid fill the small gaps that were between the two of us and the Bunshin suddenly the beast's stomach convulsed sending us and the Bunshin up Isobu's esophagus a handful of the Bunshin was dispersed as they smacked into the spikes within the stomach before we knew it we were on the bank of the lake covered in bile and mucus ah oh, this is disgusting I yelled Picking my hand up from the slimy ground I heard Gurin scream in pain to my left as I see the now. Soaked bandages, shit it is getting into her system. I thought as I rushed over I dragged her away. From the slime covered area and put her in the lake in an attempt to wash away the excess bodily. Fluids I grabbed a scroll and unsealed its contents and as the medical supplies materialized I grabbed some medical lotion that will help with disinfection this will hurt a lot i said handing her a towel to bite down on i removed the bandages so i could work with the little medical knowledge i know i should have taken those damn courses i mentally roared thinking back to when ba chan offered me lessons on the count of three ready she nodded three two before i said one eye began to apply the ointment as she wailed I watched as the ointment began to do its work to disinfect the wound and wrapped a new fresh set of bandages on I looked at the passed out woman and shook my head before turning towards Isobu sorry that's the only way I thought I would be able to get out I said scratching the back of my head oh don't give me that I know it was Karama's idea Isobu yelled causing me to laugh well I'll be damned. I heard from my right, I never would have thought that these beasts could talk, the man from before said he then turned to me, and you were able to make him talk what's so special about you, he said as a bat landed on his shoulder, so that's what that clicking was before, I thought, me I am just a simple shinobi that is living out his life to be the next Hokage. I said shrugging the man's face contorted into one of anger, too. Hell with you uptight Konoha Nin you always think you are the greatest, he yelled drawing a kanai. It was at this moment that I saw his eyes drift away from me and towards Gurin. G-U-R-E-N what did you do to her, he yelled throwing his kanai and drawing a second there was something odd about the Kanai as it flew because it was flying at an odd trajectory before the tip blew up as a bunch of shrapnel came my way I scooped up Gurin and dodged most of the projectiles while some were still 
embedded in my leg. That was awfully reckless of you, I yelled from behind a tree. I got silence. In return, you could have hit your teammate with that, I continued I felt the woman stir a little. And opened her eyes just in time to hear the man yell back, she can die today for all I care I just wanted to be the one to end her traitorous life. He yelled back I noticed Gurren tightened her grip on my jacket which didn't go unnoticed. Really you would abandon your teammate like that? I asked. Without question, I looked down to Gurren who had a face of fury. You may regret those words, I yelled, watch this, I whispered as I made a single hand sign suddenly ice spikes shot up from the ground trapping the woman's teammate in ice I slowly walked out of the tree line to confront my foe. As Gurren wobbled over as well, oh did I hurt your feelings and you trapped me in your crystals, he teased, no that would be me, I said as I covered my hand in crystal his eyes widened in surprise. Pulse that's not crystal that's ice, I said, but I thought the Yuki clan was extinct, he said. Actually it is not extinct for one and I am also not a Yuki, I said shocking the guy, then how do you have Hyaten, he half demanded, wouldn't you like to know, I said smirking I watch as Gurren's look of rage rests as a crystallized blade forms from her hand and impales her former teammate, Gurren. The voice of a child rang out from behind the two of us as we turned around, why, Yukimaru, chapter 46 Naruto's Pav. I stood beside Gurren as the corpse of her former teammate fell to the ground. With an audible thud, oh shit. I thought looking between the woman and the crying boy, W. Why, the kid said in a shaky and scared tone I watch as Gurin takes a step towards the child as tears begin. To break through her tear ducts she took another step and another and another before she ran to the boy engulfing him in a hug while tears streamed down their faces. I, I had to, she mumbled barely. Audible to myself, I doubt that. I thought looking at the corpse, he was going to betray us and Take you away from me, she wailed, that I don't doubt. I thought giving her the benefit of the doubt I walked over to the two as I felt that the battle has ended. Wait if the battle's over and her teammate was here. Hanada, moving as fast as I could I rushed to the former battlefield to see three of Gurren's associates trying to wrangle up some of my unconscious teammates while the one Looked at the woman with a grin full of lust, that sick son, of a bitch, before anyone knew it the man with the lustful grin and the arm cannon was ripped in half causing the blood and guts to spray over some of his teammates and especially myself, holy shit, one yelled backing away while the one with the gas mask screamed out for his brother, I'll kill you, he shouted charging in as I began forming a Mokaton Rasengan in my hand as Karama's chakra engulfed me, what the hell, they were all shouting in a state of panic but the man with the gas mask still charged me, Mokaton Rasengan, I yelled as the ball of chakra smashed into him sharp splinters of wood shot through the man and out his back killing him, M. Mokaton, one said taking a step back, I thought he was the only success of Orochimaru-sama, the last one who was all the might of the team making more hand signs on instinct. Alone, shot in Karasutarurian crystal release crystal rain one inch thousands of crystals in the shape of. Senban rose from the ground all aimed for the brute when I noticed he was bulking up somehow, no. Matter, I thought sending the Senban crystals flying I activated my dojutsu to see if there was. Anything about him that was Keke Jenke worthy and I noticed small traces of Daiton mud release. Damn, I thought not being able to copy the affinity I kept the dojutsu activated just in case the needles just bounced off the guy narrowing my eyes I rush him as more mud is drawn into his system. This time I was able to copy it I allowed mud to flow into my system as my arm bulked up an hour. 
fist collided the force of the collision sent shockwaves outwards blasting away some of the blood. And gore around us as well as my teammates I take a kanai in my free hand adding futon to it. Creating the Heenand attempt to disembowel the man but he backed away with more speed than I expected causing me to stagger forward and off balance as his fist crashed into my gut sending me high into the air and caused me to spit up some blood I tried to turn in the air to have a better landing but the brute was now above me hands intertwined as he brought them down on my back I rocketed towards the ground thinking of a way out of this mess as I began trying to make hand signs I couldn't formulate any jutsu that would have been beneficial to me and I accepted what was about to happen and closed my eyes, Naruto-kun. Suddenly I felt a new renowned vigor and made hand signs. As fast as I could as I was almost to the ground, Futon Megumi Osuku wind release saving grace two inches. I yelled as my descent slowed rapidly and I stopped a mere few centimeters from the ground, hot damn. That was close, I thought before having to dodge another strike front the brute, damn you, I yelled looking at the man who had an impassive face taking another kanai and channeling futon chakra into it again the man sent a barrage of punches at me but I was able to deflect some with the kanai, causing little to no effect to the man, damn this and damn Orochimaru's experimentation, I thought. As I slipped under a right hook and jumped over a leg sweep and sent the kanai into the air using my right foot I kicked the kanai with the back of my heel into the man's skull I watch as the man just pulls the thing out and breaks it like nothing ever happened. Oh you are kidding me why Kami why? I mentally complained, shut it kit, Karama said before resting again, what it's true that should have ended him. I thought pointing at the guy mentally, yes but this is not you you have always used me to kill this is all you, Karama said and his words sunk in hard, I, I killed them. I killed them me I did this, I began to hyperventilate as I watched Gurren come out from the trees, Gozu stop. She yelled as I turned in time to see his fist just above my head, Gurren, the brute said with a monotone voice. Stop he is no longer our foe, she said as she then looked around looking at the carnage that had happened. Kami Sake what happened here, she yelled as I looked at my own hands in clothes that were drenched in blood they were shaking my hands were shaking like there was no. Tomorrow I felt a hand on my shoulder but I couldn't bear to look the person in the eye after what I did, this is your first, the woman said, I, I don't know, was all I could respond with there had been times where Karama switched out with me and he killed but I have a gut feeling that wasn't true. Every time, you don't know, she asked and I told her about how I used the fox to do my dirty work I felt her not understanding my situation as she then dragged me towards my teammates who were coming. As I just sat there shaking, ah, uh, my head. I heard a familiar voice behind me but I couldn't move. Besides the shaking, N, Naruto, he said, Naruto, he said wrapping me in a hug, T, to San I. I killed them I killed both of them, I said, was it the fox cause that wasn't you if it. His voice was soft and caring as he rubbed his hand on my back to try and calm me down, no, I yelled cutting him off, this, was me. I continued to hyperventilate before I passed out from lack of oxygen. Kakashi's Pav. I looked around at what happened and I gotta say he really messed those two up the. One was ripped completely in half while the other looked like a dead bush was protruding out of his. Back, fuck this is bad. I thought scratching the back of my head. Why are you no longer trying to. Attack me. I asked the two who were standing there. I have spent some time talking to Naruto well. After we got swallowed by the Sanbi, she said, what, I yelled in shock, how did you get out, I asked, Naruto created a bunch of cage bunshin and had Isobu throw us up, she replied, I see, I replied as a few others began to wake up, 
Can you all watch after Naruto? I asked the few that awoke. What the hell happened here Kakashi Sensei, Shikamaru asked, that doesn't matter right now. Just watch over Naruto, I said, please if you will excuse me, I said walking towards the lake I looked out only to see a glimpse of one of the Sanbi's tails seeing the beast jogged a few memories that I had been able to repress for about a year now, ka, ka, she, I heard and I turned around expecting to see her but I saw no one I looked down at my hand as I felt the blood and gore on my hand once again from the faithful day it was at this point that I realized that this was where she breathed her last breath at my hand I ran to the lake and plunged my hand into the cool liquid and began to try to wash it all off I did this for who knows how long the thing that brought me out of my trance was a hand on my shoulder I looked down at my hands once again to see that my hand was pruned and the skin was starting to peel where I had been rubbing, Kashi Koi, I heard from behind me, this is where it happened, I said looking down at the waves crashing into the bank, I know, she said wrapping her arms around me, Anko, I said finally turning around in her arms I looked into her eyes and suddenly a weight that was on me for so long vanished, yes Kashi Koi, she asked with a soft voice I realized that it was time I then pulled a scroll out and channeled chakra to it, releasing the sealed item only to reveal a small box, Anko. You have been with me since Naruto came into our lives not as my sensei's son or my student but as our son you have been there to support me. Throughout all of my issues that I have had over the years and stuck by my side whenever I worried about him while he was with Jiraiya-sama, I said taking a second to catch my breath, Ka. She started, please let me finish Anko, I said as my hand began to shake as I reached for the small box. Anko I have loved you for about four years now and I have come to the realization that I want no one else in my life besides you so, tears began to form in her eyes as a hand crept up to her mouth. Covering it, Anko Mitarashi will you marry me, and cut next part after 10 likes and 5 comments.